Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. This is the day after Christmas. And uh, I honestly didn't know what to expect when I got up here. Um, we've been in the mud for the past several days. And I didn't know if there'd be mud here on my landing. They don't have a lot of snow up here in Paul Smith's College, where I'm working. But as you can see, it still froze up and quite nice. My trucker came in on Saturday, took out three loads so that we just have two logs here. And uh, today I have Lady and Bill. And I just got back from cutting some trees and I fed them some hay and they were starting to eat up all their hay. So I decided to pull my hay bag away from them so they'd have some for lunchtime. But today I wanna to show you some things that I don't normally show you um, and I don't normally do. I wanna show you skidding with one horse. Let's uh, go into the woods and I'll explain why I wanna do a, some one horse logging today. So we're heading up this opposite side that I normally skid from. My landing is right there and everything Beyond that is done. And I have some trees up here I want to skid in from this side of the landing. And I apologize if my audio is not quite as good as it should be. This morning I decided not to bring my audio with me and I'm just using the audio from the GoPro, which is okay. But the other audio is so much better. But it's always a risk of having it get knocked off my coat because of the train and what I'm doing here. So I decided I better not bring those that particular audio with me and we'll just go off the GoPro. Okay, so I told you earlier in an earlier video that I was hoping to get done up to the trail for the cross-country skiers and that's off to the right. You can see a, uh, a birch up there that's got a red tag on it off to our right that's where the trail is so i'm actually getting really close to being done this is the trail i made this morning and the team can get in here all right but what i have is a whole bunch of small trees here as i was cutting them down this morning i thought of a whole bunch of things i wanted to explain to you guys and i hope i can remember what they were and be able to explain to you what's going on on this particular job. So we have some little trees here. Um, there's one little pine right there that I cut down and I have two pines right here. Now what I've been showing you mostly on this um, job is the bigger and the better and the nicer stuff and I mean that's just a little bit more impressive to me and funner to cut and funner to get out than this little junk. And, uh, but every time you do a log job, you're always dealing with this little junk plus the good stuff. So you always have the good and the bad. And uh, I don't always show the bad just because it's kind of a nuisance and I can never get a very big hitch to take down to the landing. So it frustrates me sometimes um, when I'm dealing with this little stuff. But that's just the way it is sometimes. So what I have here is I've got three little trees right here. And I also want to explain something about horse logging. I've had a few people that ask, well, can you make a living horse logging? Uh, could, could I make a living horse logging? Um, and it's a hard question to answer. I mean, the part that I can make a living, yes, I can make a living horse logging, but I've been doing it for a long time. So when someone new asks me, well, how, how can I do it and how can I make a living? And uh, the one thing I can tell you, and I, I really came to my mind even this morning as I was cutting these trees, you've got to be very careful what jobs you agree to go and do. And you need to price that job in such a way that you can make a living. This particular tree right here is 
all it is, and you go to a lot of work to do it, you cut this one tree down, and all I'm gonna have is two eight-foot logs. This little crook right here, between the two eight-footers has to go. That will be cut out, so we'll have two nice eight-foot logs. And there's nothing left in the top that's marketable, so it has to just be all cut up and lopped up, and there's a lot of work to it. So, um, you have to be very careful when you're looking at log jobs that you don't take on jobs with too many trees like this. If you do, you have to price it accordingly so you can make a living at it because you cannot go, you can't agree to do a job and then not have it be profitable for you. You know, you, you're going to lose your shirt. Generally when I'm doing jobs, there'll always be spots in the lot where you have these areas where you have just a bunch of junk trees or little trees. These little trees just do not add up very fast. And it really, really slows production down on these little trees. But if you have enough nice big trees in most of the area of the log job, you don't mind taking the time to get some of this stuff out because you've already made more than enough money on the spots where it is nice. But this just those are just some things you really have to think about when you're buying log jobs if you want to try to log with horses. It's no different than even if you're logging with a skitter. You can lose your shirt if you have too much junk that you have to bring out. Now I realize that, don't get me wrong here, I realize it's important for the health of the forest to take the junk out. But landowners just cannot expect the logger to go in there and do it for free. And if they want that junk taken off their property, they have to pay accordingly. Now I have a bunch of land of my own back home and I will go in and cut this junk all day long. But that's because it's my land and it's improving in value for me or my children down the road. Um, but you just, landowners can't expect you as the logger to come in and do that for them. They have to um, put up the money to, to make that happen if that's what they want. And it's the best and wisest thing to do to get rid of this stuff because in this particular situation, these are small kind of grubby trees and these are the same age as the big nice trees that are in here. That's just the way it works so often. You know, the growth rings are so close together, they just did not grow very good. And it was just too tight in here and there hasn't been enough light and for them to really take off. Now the forester did leave that one right there because by doing that, that tree still will grow. Since these are out of here, it gives it more light and it's gonna grow better. And same with this one here. So anyways, we're gonna come in here with Bill and just skid this stuff out because I can hitch right on with Bill to these whole trees because they're not very big. And he only needs a tiny little path to get through. So much less than the team and the cart needs to get around in spots. So I actually cut a little trail and as you can see, there's a deadfall right here. And he'll just be going through that tiny little spot right there, I hope. And we'll just come right through here the log. And I'll just skid it up. I won't take it all the way to the landing. I'll just take it up onto the trail where I can hitch onto the team and kind of bunch them together so that it'll be easy to get out. So as I was cutting, I cut those three trees back there and that first one tree we had. And then the rest of the trees that I'm seeing on this spot right here, I can easily get to with the team. Except for, let me get over here. This one little tree right here. Now this was in a small area that I knew there'd be trouble or I, I thought there might be. And sure enough, the tree got hung up. Well, that's not a problem. At least I don't think so. Because I can come in here with Bill and hitch on that. Put a nice rolling hitch on it to roll it off the stump. And hopefully, we'll take it right out through there. And then we'll cut it up. So let's go and see what we can do with a single horse. And I'll explain a bunch of things about working a single horse. Now there's another thing, even as we walk out to landing, I'll talk about using a single horse because after I get in here and start working, I'll probably just try to set the camera up in different spots so you can see me work with Bill, but I probably won't do any talking. I might later on do some talk over on the video to explain what I'm doing. But, uh, but anyways, single horse logging. I, I, 
I'd like to say that it'd be very difficult or almost impossible to make a living logging for the single horse. The production would be so, so little in comparison to two and the cart. You'd have to have lots that are really, really close, really, really short skids to make it happen with a single horse. I'm not saying you can't, but it'd be difficult. But on the other side of the coin, I guess we could say, um, so many people want to do homesteading and, and want to cut their own firewood. A single horse that you have and you want to get out your firewood, for example, or some logs for your own self is very economical and practical because you don't have to push in such a way to actually make a living. You're just doing this for your own self. So I really would promote a using a single horse in a situation like that. Sometimes it's easier to use a single horse. Sometimes it's actually harder than using the team. With the team on the cart, you can sit up on the cart and you have better control of your horses than you will if they're you know, on the ground. When you're walking behind a horse, you can't get the leverage and uh, to be able to hold a horse back if he wants to go too fast, you know? But let me explain a few things. So we have Bill here, and either lady would work too. They both work fine and single. Um, so this is the Whipple tree or Whiffle tree. Now this is kind of the same as you'd have on the team. You have two of these on the team, and then you have a double tree or, or an evener. But for this is a sp specific one I keep for skin logs if I want to skid logs. It also has a nice hook right here, a swivel hook that I use to hitch the chain to. Um, I've got this one and I've actually got another one, a guy from the, the channel, I can't remember his name, sorry about that, but he gave me another one of these a couple years ago and uh, maybe this is the one, I can't remember, but uh, uh, thank you for that, whoever gave me that. And uh, they're really, really nice. It's a fairly long hook, so the chain is less apt to fall off. And so we'll hitch this up to Bill and I did notice or remember a little too late that I forgot his lines single horse lines. So I will show you how I drive without the regular single, long single horse lines also. So let's get them hitched up and we'll get going. Okay, so I have his lines hitched. These are his team lines. So as you can see, and, and probably can already figure out, I can't drive them like I would if I had a regular um, long two lines that you would use for a single horse. So I have his lead rope and I'm just gonna lead him up into the woods. Would have been a good day for Brenda to come up to the woods with me to show this better than I can, but I'll try my best. Maybe sometime soon we'll do it again when I actually have the long lines here for driving too. Okay, I got Bill tied to a tree here because I want to talk about something else here before we get started. 
two things actually. Brenda had reminded me that uh, to remind you guys so that we still have calendars available. The 24 cal 2024 calendars that we make, um, they're still available. So if you still want to order some of those, they're still available. We don't, we don't have a huge amount left, but we've got a few. So um, by all means, uh, let us know if you want to order some of those. So what I wanted to talk a little bit about is this particular land on Paul College is set up in such a way, I'm not exactly sure how it is set up, but somehow it's set up from way back years ago that this land is the college land, but it's also the, it's also can be used by the public. So the public can come up here and do cross country skiing, can go snowshoeing, all this stuff, and enjoy this land right along with the college being able to use it and to take care of it. So that's what we have up here. What I want to show you and I'm very disgusted about is the fact that people abuse things so much. I have seen in the last two or three weeks in this particular property so much trash scattered around this property. We have cans, we have bottles, so, so much stuff, steel all over the place that it's in some ways kind of dangerous to be walking around even with the horses and all. You step on a beer bottle from years ago and it breaks and you get this big piece of glass sticking up for a potential horse to cause trouble with or get into trouble with. Fortunately, and I'm so glad about this, my horses that are working here have their heavy logging shoes, but they also have the um, snow pad at the bottom of it. And that's a piece of rubberish type of thing. I don't know if I can show you. Come here, Bill. Right here. And that kind of pops the wet snow off so it doesn't ball up on the foot. That's the purpose of it. But the big advantage of it even now, today, on this particular job, it also protects their feet. If they were to step on something, that um, rubber sole underneath their feet actually protects their feet. So that's a great thing. Anyways. Lady is hollering in the background. I'm surprised Bill's not hollering yet, but uh, she'll get over it. And we'll skid these few logs out and I'll show you how I do it, even without my driving lines. Yep. Yep. So because I don't have the driving lines, I'm leading them, okay. or attempting to. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Hey. So, so I always tie my lines to the britching, but they were a little bit too much slack in the lines, so we actually stepped on them, which is a little unusual, but anyways, I'm pulling it out now, and I'm going to shorten it up so that it doesn't get caught. Now I have it too short. To make this work, you have to have enough slack in it so you can grab the lines to be able to turn him and to drive him with just the one, just the end of the line. So that's what I'm doing here now. I'm just backing him up at the end of the line and getting him hitched on. After he's hitched on, hook fell off of course had to, that had to happen but I could put some black tape around it so that doesn't happen but there's a little bit I gotta do it not, not a big deal but now I actually drive the horse right behind the collar 
that way I can hold on to both lines and have good control of the A lot of times, years ago, I used to skid a lot with a horse, and I would just let them go on their own. I wouldn't actually drive them, but uh, today we're just driving. Hey. Okay, I just tie him there just so I can show you some more of the trash that I'm dealing with. 
see these glass bottles? Not good. So now I'll hitch onto this tree and pull it down. Oh, <laughs> 
Okay guys, back to a little bit better trees now. Let's put this one down, this is much better. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You, we'll see you next time, you have a great day.